what's up guys welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3d model this week we're going to be making a vietnam war era military helmet so let's dive into it all right so the helmet is basically a sphere that's chopped in half so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to start with the sphere i'm going to chop that in half take that bottom edge and i can start extruding and scaling it to give it that little brim or that little curved edge on the bottom so let's go ahead and start playing around with the shape a little bit so we can make it look a little bit more like a helmet. So I did a quick Google search and it seems like the helmet most used in that era was the M1 helmet. Now I wanted to model this exactly to the actual dimensions of this helmet, but I couldn't find any really nice orthographic side or front views of the helmet. Everything was in perspective and if I brought those in and put them as image planes, I feel like since it was perspective, it would just mess with the shape and it would take me a while to figure it out. And it would probably just confuse me more. So rather than doing that, I just found some perspective images that I would just follow along as somewhat as a guidance. And we could just wing it along the way and just get it as close as we can to what the M1 looks like. Now I use the movie Platoon as a big reference for this model. If you guys haven't seen it, it's a really great movie. Young Charlie Sheen, this is one of the photos I used as my reference material as well as you other Google images. This movie also has a young Johnny Depp. What a legend. So let's go ahead and keep refining the shape so we can get it to look a little bit more accurate and similar to the M1 military helmet. Alright, so the helmet shape's looking pretty good. We're just going to highlight all of those faces and I can extrude it to give it a little bit of thickness. And once we do that, I can double click those two bottom edges around the bottom rim and then we can just give those a small bevel so when we smooth it out, it can retain that hard edge. And now we're just going to continue playing around with the shape a little bit more.
All right, so the helmet shape's looking a little bit better. Now, just to help me start visualizing the model, we're gonna create that little strap that's on the bottom. That basically just sits above the brim and holds all those objects in place. So to do that, I'm gonna duplicate this object, highlight all those spaces on the bottom, and I can extract them from the model to create that little strap. And then all I have to do is just play around with those vertices and mess around with the shape to make it look a little bit more accurate to that little strap or piece of fabric that goes around to help hold all the objects to it. Now, like usual, I'm gonna keep the strap in low polys. I'm not gonna give it any thickness yet until we finalize this helmet shape, but once we do that, then we can come back to the strap. So let's go ahead and just play around with these vertices a little bit so we can fit it a little bit closer to my helmet. Alright, so the helmet's looking much better, now we're going to come back to it, but next up are those little metal pieces that help hold the chin strap in place. Now that's pretty straightforward, we're going to create a little cube and we can start blocking out that shape. Alright, so I quickly stepped out to take my dog for a walk and I came back and I forgot to hit record but I just played around with the shape a little bit. Sometimes it's nice to look away from the screen and come back with a fresh pair of eyes and I quickly noticed how my helmet wasn't looking as accurate as I thought it was. So I played around with the shape a little bit and I quickly noticed that I wasn't recording myself so I'm just going to show you exactly what I did. Now here is the older model and here is the newer one beside it so you can see I just scaled it and made it look a little bit smaller, tightened it up a tiny bit. I didn't add anything to the model, I just played around with the original shape that we had. So you guys really didn't miss anything, I just scaled a few things and shrunk the helmet up a little bit. So now back to the model, we're going to create the inside shell. Basically these helmets have two pieces to them, it's like a big shell that sits over top of it. So to do that we're going to take advantage of the shapes we already have, so we're just going to duplicate that same helmet shape we have, and I can scale it a little bit smaller to fit inside. Alright, so now the helmet's looking a little bit more realistic. Now we're going to delete a lot of those inside faces that you're not going to see, just to save up on our UV map, but we're going to do that later on. So next up is that little metal piece that's attached to our chin strap. That basically attaches it onto the helmet. So to do that, we're going to create another little low poly cube and then start blocking out that shape. Now while looking online at my reference, it seemed like there were so many different variations of these little metal clips that were attached to the chin straps, so I'm just going to generalize it, I'm not going to really copy anything specific from my reference, we're just going to kind of create it ourselves. So I'm not worrying too much about this shape, I just want it to look like a little metal piece to attach that little loop we created earlier, so let's go ahead and continue blocking the shape out.
All right, so that little metal piece is finished. And next up is creating the actual chin strap itself. So to do that, I'm gonna create another cube and we can scale that out into a long rectangle and start positioning that into that little metal clip. On this side of the chin strap, it's different than the other one we're gonna create later. This side is basically the side that it attaches onto. So we're gonna create a little tiny cube and then start blocking out a little metal piece that the chin strap can click onto when it's basically attached. And once again, I'm not really copying anything specific out of my reference photos since they were all looking so different in every image I came across. So we're just gonna create our own and make it very simplified and fit it onto basically the middle or end piece of our chin strap. So let's continue blocking this shape out. All right, cool, so that little piece is looking good. Now I just wanna finish up this little chin strap. I basically want this side to loop around and it's gonna be sewn together, basically holding that little metal piece we just created on the end of it. So to do that, we're just gonna continue extruding that chin strap piece so it loops around and it basically attaches onto itself. And then later on in Substance Painter, we can add some cool little stitching effects onto the strap. Now my pivot was really messed up for some weird reason, so bear with me as I keep extruding the shape so we can finalize the side of the chin strap. All right, cool, so that little chin strap is looking good. Now we're just gonna take that whole object, I'm gonna duplicate it to create the other side. But this side's a little bit different than the other one. We're gonna remove that bottom little piece we created earlier, and using the exact same process, I'm gonna create a little other metal piece that can clip onto the other one we created on the other side. So I'm just gonna block this out, once again, not following anything specific in my reference. I'm just gonna generalize it, make it pretty simple, almost like a simplified little metal clip and then once again, attach it onto the bottom of this side of the strap, which we're gonna make a little bit longer so it can fit around this person's chin if it was on someone's head. And then we can finalize these straps. So let's go ahead and start blocking out that clip.
All right, so those chin straps are looking good. Now we're gonna quickly jump back to the helmet. So since the top piece of this helmet's basically made from all fabric, it's sewn together directly in the middle. So if you look at a lot of the reference photos, you'll see there's this tiny little bump that runs all the way from the top to the back. And there's also some stitching marks where that fabric's sewn together. So to create that look or something similar, we're gonna first smooth out the object. So we're gonna add one extra subdivision so we have some extra polys to work with. Then we're gonna take that edge loop that's directly in the middle of our helmet and we can bevel out that edge just so we can create a small gap that's running directly in the middle of our helmet. Now I'm gonna spend a little bit of time playing around with those polys so it looks a little bit cleaner, but once that's all done, we can take all of those faces and we can extrude them up to create that little bump where that fabric piece is. And then later on in Substance Painter, we can add some small stitching marks there as well. So let's go ahead and create this fabric look on top of our helmet, and then we can start playing around with those polys so we can make it look a little bit more bumpy, like actually some fabric material, and it's not some hard metal. Now you could definitely spend a lot more time cleaning this model up and having some much cleaner topology, especially here on the top. Now I was just rushing this because that two hour limit goes by pretty quick for my modeling and I didn't want to spend too much time right here on this top piece. So one thing that I did do, just to make my life easier, was change my transform constraints on the side on my modeling tab and just switching that down to edge. So then when I move those polys around, it just slides along the edge and I won't be messing around with the shape too much. So let's just continue on and let's quickly move these polys aside so then I can have a nice clear gap that I can extrude outwards. Alright, so now our helmet's looking much more realistic. It looks like some fabric materials actually on top of it. So now we can start adding some small objects onto the sides. Now the first thing we're gonna start is that pack of cigarettes, and that's pretty straightforward. We're gonna create a little cube and we can start blocking out that cigarette pack that's gonna sit right underneath that strap we created earlier. And one thing I'm gonna do is add one edge loop that's directly in the middle so I can bend in that cigarette pack so it looks like that strap that's wrapped around my helmet's just from the pressure of it is almost bending in my cigarette pack a little bit. And once that cigarette pack is all blocked out and in position, we can take that low poly strap we created earlier and start playing around with those polys to sit over top of it. And that's a big reason why we left the strap low polys. We're gonna start adding some objects underneath and it's gonna make moving around the strap much easier since we have a lot less polys to work with. So let's go ahead and just wrap up this little cigarette pack and then we can start moving on to a few other small objects. So the cigarettes are looking good. Next up are creating some small bullets. So we're gonna create another low poly cylinder and we can start extruding some edge to give it some shape so it looks similar to a bullet.
All right, and once we have that bullet blocked out, we can start positioning that under our strap beside our cigarette pack. Now I'm gonna have to play around with the proportions a little bit to make it look a little bit more accurate. And then once again, going back to our strap, we can start positioning that over top of our bullets. Alright, so those bullets are looking good. Now on the opposite side, I want to have a tiny little ace of spades and a little picture. Now it's pretty common in the Vietnam era for soldiers to put up ace of spades in their helmet. And there's a couple of reasons for that and I'm not sure what's real and what's not. I've heard a few things like the ace of spades is the death card and it would just scare the enemy and they would leave it on dead bodies in, after a firefight. And I also heard it was part of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, which was the spades, and all of those parachute infantry people would put the ace of spades in their helmet. Regardless of what the actual meaning was, I thought it looked pretty cool and it gave a little bit of like a backstory to this helmet and to this model. So to do that, we're gonna create a little cube. I'm gonna remove all those faces so I have one side to work with we can start adding some edge loops and positioning that onto our helmet so it looks like it's curved underneath that strap and sitting basically just on top of our helmet. So let's go ahead and start blocking out that ace of spades and then we can start fitting it underneath that strap. And once that card is now sitting nicely underneath that strap, we can go ahead and select all of those faces and I can extrude it to give it a little bit of thickness.
so the helmet's slowly coming together, I want to add another small object in between that cigarette pack and the bullets. Now, I thought just adding some little rolled up piece of paper would be fitting. So to do this, we're gonna fake it. All we're gonna do is just create another small cylinder and I can increase the subdivision cap so I have a couple edge loops on the ends to work with. And then I can take those faces and extrude them up just so it looks like it's a rolled piece of paper and then we can bevel out some edges. So let's go ahead and start blocking out this piece of paper. All right, so that piece of paper is looking good. Now I just wanna add one more object to our helmet and that is a small picture. It was pretty common during these war times for people to put pictures of their loved ones on their helmets. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna basically take that same ace of spades object that we created earlier. I'm gonna duplicate that over so I can create another small picture. Alright, so basically all of the objects are on our helmet, now I'm just going to quickly jump back to those straps we created earlier and I can start beveling out some edges and just finalizing some of those shapes. So I'm going to speed up this next little bit as I'm just going through those objects we already created and basically just finalizing them.
Alright, so I could have easily just wrapped up the model since all the objects are basically done, but I was worried that you were going to see inside of the helmet in some of these renders. So now I wanted to look a little bit more realistic in case that happened, so I decided just to create the bottom part of the inside of the helmet where those little straps are. So I'm just going to speed this up since it's not necessary and you can easily just cut this out of your own model since you end up not seeing them in the final renders but I decided just to go ahead and add them. So let's go ahead and start blocking those shapes out. Alright, so those inside components are all blocked out. Now let's just quickly jump back to that strap we have running around the outside of our helmet. We can add a little bit of thickness to that, make sure it's sitting nice and snug against all those objects, and then we can quickly go over those UVs and then start texturing.
All right, so the model is finished. Now let's quickly go over how I did those UVs. So here is the model in its finished form. And I decided to break this into three different groups for the three different textures applied. Now I could have easily combined the objects and straps into one, but since it's not being used in a video game or anything, I decided just to try to get the most out of the textures and the resolution. I just decided to break them all up into three different groups. So the first one is all of the objects, so cigarettes, the bullets, and the pictures. The other group is all of the straps. And the last one being the helmet. Now I could have UV'd this a couple of different ways, but I decided just to make a UV cut directly down the middle where that seam is. And then I can split that into two different sides, just so I can try to get the most out of my UV space on my UV map. So that's exactly how I did those UVs. Now let's jump into Substance Painter so we can start texturing. All right, so now in Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. And once that's loaded in, just take a quick look over the model and make sure everything's looking good. And if everything's looking correct, you can go over to your texture set settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps, and choose your output size. I chose 4K. And make sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh since we only have one mesh to work with. And then we can go ahead and bake out those textures. All right, so starting at the top of our texture set list is our helmet texture. So starting off there, we're gonna go over to our Smart Materials tab, and I'm gonna go choose one of those Fabric Woodland Smart Materials, and then we can apply that to the mesh. So all I'm gonna do is open up that Fabric folder. I'm gonna turn off that dirt layer since it'll just help me visualize how this material is looking. And then I can start tweaking a few of the settings. So I'm gonna drag down all of those sliders for the height since I can add my own fabric material afterwards. And then I can start playing around with those colors. I'm just gonna make all of those shades a little bit more dull, a little less saturated. And I can also start playing around with the folding effects, just making them a little less dramatic. Helmet. Now a lot of these helmets from my Google images were showing they were like a brownish material or color. So to do that we're going to go choose a smart material, one of those plastic materials and I can sign it to that mesh. All I have to do is just change that color so it's a nice dark brown. And it seems like there was like a line pattern that was in all of these materials in my reference photos. So to do that I'm going to go choose that same fabric baseball hat material we assigned to our other camo material. 
and then just assign it to this plastic material as well. And all I have to do is just scale that nice and small so you see some nice line effects into that plastic material as well. Alright, so the helmet is looking good, now it's time to add a little bit of detail. Now if you look at a lot of these Vietnam War era helmets, they had a lot of these little slits or cuts into them, and I'm not exactly sure why, but I wanted to just replicate that since this is the style we were going for. Now I was looking through my alphas and I couldn't figure out a way to actually create this little cut, so I decided just to create my own alpha in Photoshop. Now if you guys put a little bit more effort into it, you could probably make this look a little bit better than I did. I did this so quickly just as a test and since it worked out good, I just decided to use my test as my actual alpha. And all I did to create this was just paste the black background in Photoshop and then I would just go to my brush tool and changed it to one of the dry media brushes that come with Photoshop. And then honestly, I just like drew in a circle in the shape of what was in that reference photo. I was just testing it. I first did the first one at full opacity and then for the second strip around that, I just dragged down my opacity to like around 50%. So I could have some little blending effect between the material. Either way, it looked similar to that Charlie Sheen platoon photo, those little cuts that were in his helmet. So I decided to go with this. But like I mentioned, you guys could probably do it much better just by taking a little bit more time. So I just exported that from Photoshop and imported that into my Substance project and set that to an alpha. And then all I have to do afterwards is just play around with the color and the height channel depending on how much of a bump I want on that alpha. And then start just pasting that all over my helmet. So let's go ahead and we can create these little cuts all over my helmet mesh. And we can hopefully make it look a little bit more realistic to that reference photo. Alright, so those little cuts that we pasted all over our model is looking good. Now I just need to add a little bit of a color where that little cut is so it looks like there's a material under it, so it actually looks like it's a hole. So to do that, I'm going to create another fill layer, make the color just a really dark color and I can start drawing a little line directly where those little cuts are from those alphas. Now I'm also going to add a silver armor material at the bottom of our layers so later on I can just erase some little areas of my camo material and a little metal will show up underneath that. Now we're going to do that later on just a little bit around the brim of our helmet but for now let's just continue coloring in these little cuts. All right, so those alphas are looking a little bit better now. Next up is just creating a little bit of dirt on top of that mesh. So we're gonna go turn on that dirt layer we originally turned off, and I'm just gonna drag down that slider so it's not as dirty, just so I can have a little bit of extra dirt and grunge on top of that camo material. And we're also gonna add a little bit of dirt and grunge to that strap we have around our helmet since it's looking a little bit too clean. So to do that, I'm gonna add a fill layer, go to my masks tab, and I can just drag on whatever masking effect I wanna add to create that dirt and grunge. I'm actually gonna create a few different masking effects so I can layer them on top of each other. And once I'm happy with it, I can create a group like a folder and then drag all of those masking effects into it and assign it to that mesh. All 
All right, so the helmet is looking good. Next up are all those little objects. So we're gonna start with that cigarette pack. I just Googled an old cigarette pack from that era, which tends to be Marlboro. So I just found an image online and I'm just gonna drag that into my file, set that as a texture, and then I can paste that directly onto my mesh. Now I did a little bit of a sloppy job when it came to my UVs on my cigarette pack. So it takes a little bit of extra work to make those textures line up properly. And I just wanted to make a note of that, that if you really pay attention to how you're doing your UVs, it can make your life much easier when you start applying those materials. So let's go ahead and we can wrap up the cigarette pack and we can move on to a few other things. All right, so the cigarettes are looking good. Next up is that little piece of paper. So I found a stylized paper material on the Substance Source website, and I decided just to use that for this piece of geometry. Now for all the writing on the piece of paper, I just found a random cursive writing on Google, and I just saved that as a picture and dragged that in as a texture similar to that cigarette pack. And then all I have to do is just paste that directly onto my mesh. Now to make that cursive actually blend in with that stylized paper material, all I have to do is change the blending mode on that cursive layer to multiply. And then it looks like it belongs to that piece of paper. All right, so the piece of paper is wrapped up. Next are the bullets. And that's pretty straightforward. I just use a smart material, one of those bronze armor materials, and then just tweak some of those settings so it's not looking as dirty and grungy. And then I can just assign it to those bullet meshes. And then for the top of the bullet, I just wanted that to be slightly different than the bottom. So I just use another copper smart material and assign it to the top of that mesh. Alright, so next up was that Ace of Spades. Now, similar to all the other ones, I hopped on Google and found just a random Ace of Spades card. Save that and drag that into my substance file as a texture, and then I can just paste that directly onto the mesh. Now, that Ace card was looking way too clean when I applied that texture, so I just decided to add a little bit of dirt and grunge. So once again, just added a fill layer, went to my masking tab, and dragged on a masking effect so I can add a little bit of dirt on top of the card.
All right, so next up was that picture of the woman and it's very similar to how I did that Ace of Spades. I just hopped on Google and I think the height of the Vietnam War was around 1968, 69. So I just Googled 1968 woman photo or something along those lines. And I just came across this picture of this lady. So I thought it would be fitting. So all I did was save that image, drag that into my substance project as a texture, and then I could paste that directly onto my mesh. And once again, it was looking a little bit too clean, so like all the other ones adding a fill layer, I just added a masking effect so I could add a little bit of dirt and grunge on top of the photo. I also thought that the materials were looking a little flat, and adding a little folding effect would make it look hopefully a little bit more realistic, so I stole that folding effect from the flannel smart material folder, and I just decided to paste that onto my objects in my scene. So the helmet texture is looking good. Next up were the straps. So I'm gonna copy over that same material we have applied to our top strap on our helmet and then I can assign it to the bottom straps where that chin strap is. And then next up were those little metal pieces on my straps. So I decided to use one of those smart materials and assign it to those meshes as well. Alright, so the straps are looking good. We're gonna come back and polish them up later, but we're just gonna quickly jump back to that helmet material so I can just tweak a few things. All right, so the helmet's looking good. Next up is writing all of the text. Now it's pretty common during the Vietnam War era for soldiers to write things all over their helmets. If you do a quick Google search, you'll see a bunch of random things. And that's exactly what I did. I just took samples from various Google searches and the movie Platoon. And I just took little pieces that I liked and decided to use those as my text on my helmet. So all I did for this was start off with a fill layer. I decided to use one of those marker brushes and substance painter, and then I can write directly onto my mesh. So let's go ahead and start decorating my helmet a little bit and adding a little bit of detail.
right, so all of that text is applied. Now I just wanna start tweaking some of these settings and adding a few extra small details. Now I wanted to mark up some of the edges around the rim of my helmet. Now since we added that smart material, that metal texture at the very bottom of our list, if I start erasing random areas of this camo material, that metal texture will be showing up underneath it. Now I don't want it to look too beaten up, but I do want to mark it up a tiny bit. So let's go ahead with the eraser brush. I can start erasing some of that camo around that edge so I can show that little metal material underneath. Alright, so the helmet's almost finished, just those straps are looking way too clean compared to everything else above it. So let's jump back to those straps, we can add a fill layer and I can start adding a little bit of dirt and grunge effects on top of it. Alright, so the straps are looking much better. Now let's just quickly jump into the renderer so you can see how everything is looking. So all I'm going to do here is just remove that background image and the floor plane. And then I can start just changing the environmental maps and the lighting just so I can see how these materials are looking. And like always, this is when you usually need to start tweaking some of your materials and your settings that you have applied to these meshes. I find when you jump into that renderer, things always look a little bit different. So let's start doing that. Let's just start jumping back and forth and tweaking a few things so we can finalize this model and we can wrap it all up.
And then right before I thought I was done, I actually noticed I forgot to do those stitches that run across the whole top and middle of the helmet. So to do that, I'm going to jump back into the editor and I'm going to add a fill layer and I can go choose that dynamic stitching brush that comes with Substance Painter. And then I can just draw directly onto my mesh wherever I want those stitches to go. All I have to make sure is just to crank up my height slider so there's some nice bump on the stitching effect. And then I can tweak some of those roughness and color if I'd like, depending on what color of thread I want those stitches to be. So let's go ahead and add this final detail onto our model and then we can wrap it up. Alright, that's basically everything guys. That's the whole texturing and modeling process that I did to create this old Vietnam War era helmet. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more weekly 3D content. And if you feel like supporting the channel even further, as well as get access to additional content, check out my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. Alright, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.